Hi viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a beautiful problem from the topic of mechanical vibration. In this video, I have a small little demonstration also uh, where we will see this thing really happening in real life. And before I go ahead, I think I better make uh, this remark. So that time in 2020, IIT Delhi conducted it and in the, their official website, their solution is something like 8.6 hertz. And if this solution has to match, then this should not be a hollow cylinder. This uh, should be a solid spherical ball. But as students, you don't have to bother too much about the technicalities. The physics remains the same and it's indeed very interesting uh, so before we write the math the equations and everything let's see this demonstra demonstration i'm going to play it Oh, you can always ask me this question, why the amplitudes are so small? We had a very difficult time in seeing this particular apple vibrate. The answer is, all these equations hold true for real linear dynamics where the amplitudes are really small. So that's why uh, you didn't see big, large amplitudes for the apple. Make sense? So now let's go to the math. So we had this small spherical ball which had radius of 20 cm floating in water with half of its volume submerged. Now if I write the equations of equilibrium for this particular spherical ball then its weight is balanced by the buoyancy force. Now we need to compute the natural frequency of small oscillations of the ball normal to the water surface like this so what are we going to do as you saw in that illustration we are going to disturb the system slightly this way so the initial displacement imparted to the system is in the direction of little x as shown over here then what happens it start oscillating for better clarity, I have another figure here. So this was our equilibrium condition. Now from the equilibrium condition, I'm giving the system an initial disturbance by displacing it downward. Now we are asked to compute the natural frequency. There will be many shortcuts, but I'm not bothered about all this, all those things because what I'm interested in is to convey home the concepts. So I will take the detail V and for all of my friends who tell this detail V takes a lot of time, this will prepare you for the future. This kind of very detailed solution procedures will help you in the future, definitely. Those cube methods will help you to clear entrance exams, but they won't take you further in life. This is how the free body diagram of the spherical ball will look like when it is vibrating. So there are two forces, one is the weight and the other is the buoyancy force. Very important concept in any vibration problem is that first you need to identify what is a restoring force. I will pause the video here. Can you tell me what is the restoring force here in this example? I hope you got the answer. So as I push this 
spherical ball downwards there is an increase in buoyancy force so this particular force will push the spherical ball to its initial position so now we know what is the restoring force the second point is now we need to mathematically quantify it it's a bit challenging but again pause the video think on your own and come back so this was my initial state and this is the displaced state as it vibrates so this let me call this as state 1 and the, let me call this as state 2 so in state 2 what happens more volume of the spherical ball gets submerged and there is a small increase in the buoyancy force because of it now the question is what is this extra volume when I move the spherical ball downward by little x what is that extra volume of the water that gets displaced which will in turn govern the amount of increase in buoyancy force keep in mind that the little x movement what we are talking about is so small i have this is an illustration and i have exaggerated for the sake of explanation so the small increase in volume will be if I consider this as a circle of radius little capital R, then the increase in volume will be pi r square times little x. So I'm considering the small volume as a cylinder. Makes sense. It's a pretty good assumption because we are talking about very small oscillations of the ball. This is where Things like reading the question very carefully comes handy. In the question, they clearly state that it is small oscillations of the ball. So this assumption holds true. Makes sense? Now let's go back to the mathematical expression. Uh, this was our free body diagram. Now this buoyancy force is increased from that of the initial value. Okay, now let's write Newton's second law for this free body diagram. It may appear a bit lengthy, but I will break it down for you. So this is mass of the sphere times the acceleration equal to this is the my buoyancy force and this is the weight. Now focus on this particular term. Here I have two components over here. Before I discuss about this quantity buoyancy force is defined as volume or, or weight of the displaced fluid so this is the volume of the displaced fluid times the density of the displaced fluid this is density of water times acceleration due to gravity gives you the buoyancy force this is the initial volume which was initially submerged it was actually half the volume of the spherical ball now an additional volume gets su submerged because we are displacing the ball by x makes sense so this is that additional volume but what happens these two terms cancel each other this comes from the condition of static equilibrium this is similar to the example where we talk about mass hanging on a vertical spring when we define the motion about the equilibrium point the weight and the static deflection in the spring gets cancelled gets cancelled with each other this is something pretty similar okay i'm explaining all this for the sake of completeness some people will directly go ahead and they will write this equation no issues but for the sake of completeness completeness it's better you know all these things so these two terms will cancel each other then you are left with this expression i have told this many number of times when we have an equation like mx double dot plus kx equal to zero the natural frequency is governed by 
root k by m and the units will be in radians per second not in hertz you need to divide the quantity by 1 by 2 pi to get the frequency in hertz so now we have an expression here a very beautiful expression so the natural frequency will be defined like this plug and check nothing big in here I can write the mass of sphere as volume of sphere times the density of sphere times g whether it is required no it's not required because I'm not writing an expression for weight of the sphere I'm writing an expression for mass of the sphere so this is quite sufficient but we can invoke the condition of static equilibrium under static equilibrium we had the weight of the sphere balanced by the buoyancy force so the buoyancy force is this quantity multiplied by g where g is the acceleration due to gravity and this is the weight of this term times g will give you weight of the spherical ball so this helps us to get a relation between the density of the spherical ball and water now i can use this expression in this equation one so once i substitute i end up with this expression natural frequency in terms of the radius and in terms of volume of the sphere so if i assume the spring to be a solid one then i can rewrite the expression for volume of sphere as 4 by 3 pi r cube high school maths that's it plug and check i end up with this expression where everything is known to me now once i plug in all the values my omega n will be in 8.6 radians per second makes sense so this is the answer which we are looking at so to sum up when you get this kind of a problem the first thing you should ask yourself is what is the restoring force because restoring force is the one which will decide your inherent stiffness in the system and in turn it will determine the natural frequency of the system make sense another key takeaway from this problem is how efficiently we can write that restoring force as a function of the displacement here the restoring force is the increased buoyancy force increased buoyancy force is coming because there is an increase in the amount of volume which is submerged so we wrote the increase in the volume as a function of x so this was also a key step in solving the problem i hope you understood the nitty gritties of this problem so thanks for watching